Well, good morning, everyone. We've got a lot of uh, material to accomplish and uh, to cover today. What I'd like to do is basically tell you how you guys can do it in your office using PRP and stem cells for various musculoskeletal problems. Now, what you can see here is what I call the holy trinity. Basically, we use adult stem cells, we use growth factors, and we use scaffolds. This is how we get most of our musculoskeletal problems better. Uh, now, we're seeing a revolution in biologics. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I've been in that operating room for 30 years, and I kept saying to myself, there has to be a better way, and there is a better way, and that's by using the biologics that we're going to talk about. In this case, the syringe is mightier than the scalpel. We're going to have much more success using injections than we're going to have using operations down the road. Uh, we first have to talk about platelet-rich plasma because this is so intimately related to stem cells. Now, at one time, we used to think that the platelets were just basically involved in clotting the blood. Not the case. Platelets are a treasure trove of growth factors. Now, here we see a, a slide of a normal blood smear. And you can see there's just a few little platelets here, those small little objects there. Um, whereas, if we see a platelet concentrate, we see how many more platelets we have in this slide. Now, basically, we talk a little bit about the anatomy, kind of boring, but let's talk about it. The platelet has basically two things, an alpha granule and a dense granule. Now, the alpha granules are what's really important to us. These are the things that contain the growth factors and the adhesion molecules. The growth factors are what really make things work. This is the singling system of the entire body. Now, what's in a good PRP? Well, we obviously have platelets. We have neutrophils and macrophages, very important. There's some companies out there that say you don't need white blood cells, baloney. You do, otherwise it's not going to work very well. You have fibroblasts. <clears throat> you have endothelial cells. I want you to think of stem cells like an approaching army. And like any good army, you need to have a supply line. The endothelial cells gets that basket already going to make the supply line. You have keratinocytes, and a new thing that we're finding now in some of the good PRP products, you have what we call a very small endoembryonic-like stem cell in the blood, circulating, very potent cell. Now here we see a diagram of the various growth factors. Look at what we call VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, and IGF-1. These growth factors were very concerning to a lot of the athletic fields. We have what we call the World Anti-Doping Agency. They forbid us from using PRP until just about two years ago because they thought that this was going to be performance enhancement. Because, for instance, what do you have there? IGF-1, what is that? The active form of human growth hormone. But we know that we're using these to treat injuries only. We're not going to be able, at least with the regular means, to perform, improve in performance. Now, when we talk about these growth factors, you have the names that sometimes are confusing. Some of these growth factors are named after their cell of origin. Some are named after their cell that uh, they affect, others are named after the thing they do. So don't worry so much about the name, that's not that important. But how do these growth factors work? They work in three different ways. They work like our endocrine system. One portion of cells will affect another portion of cells very distant. They work as an autocrine system. Basically, they'll affect themselves. And the most important one, I think, is the paracrine system where they'll affect cells in the neighborhood. They will tell these cells what to do and how to act. Now, let's talk about cytokines. Basically, cytokines are cell singling protein molecules. This is the, basically the, the cell's uh, mobile phone communication system, so to speak. It's how we do intracellular communication. And these can be, they can be peptides, they can be proteins, they can be glycoproteins. Cytokines are basically what make us work and keep us together. Now, here we see an activated platelet. It looks sort of like an amoeba. And that activated platelet has all these various growth factors. And these growth factors send signals to the stem cells how to work. Now, the bottom line for these growth factors is they tell stem cells to grow and start producing certain biochemicals that we need. That's how this works. Now, here's a very good example. On the left, we can see what looks like an amoeba. But that's an activated growth factor, as you can see there. Now, what we're looking at is the cell membrane of a mesenchymal stem cell. The cell membrane is the brain of the cell. It's the eyes and ears. It perceives this, its environment. So this is why you want to make sure when you're doing stem cell treatments, your cell membrane is as good as it can be. You want to give your patients omega-3 fish oils. You want to get rid of those omega-6s. You want to make that membrane really work well. Very important for good results. Now we can start seeing how we're...